Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Heart of Map 4. Today we're going to be playing as the Red Flood mod as the Prussian Congo. So, probably it's not going to be a very, very long series because our focus tree really just ends as soon as we kind of expand and take over all the Congo. So that's really going to be our uh, end goal. So probably, I imagine this series is probably only going to be like six or seven parts. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, do we actually have any generals already? We do. They don't have any portraits, but that's okay. Assign both of you. Fantastic. We gotta remember that there are people assigned to this. Even though they don't actually have portraits. Uh, so, if you look at our focus tree here. Um, the way you go about declaring war. Uh, you know, you gotta do all the focuses. Get down to unification war. And then you do these in order, I believe. Yes. So, first things first. We're gonna be attacking the... Republic, which is the guy to the south, so we can essentially just put our entire army on that border and push our way straight to the coast. Seems pretty good so far. So, 70 days till we get started. And what technologies do we want? Probably, you know, the basics here. Some research, better, um, how many factories do we have? We have a single civilian factory. Okay, so we definitely want the construction speed upgrade. Um, and we have no military factories. That is an issue. And also, we can only build one factory uh, in our territory. So we're going to have some problems, I imagine, sometime in the near future. Um, Get our army and navy experience. Thank you. And now we'll kind of just have things going. As far as I know, these other countries do not have any um, national focus at the moment. Also, New Belgium's in like two separate chunks, which is a little bit strange. So we have 1.5% of recruited population. We have 7 to 10 divisions, 4 to 6, 11 to 15, and 7 to 11. So we actually have like the fewest amount of men. But again, like we literally cannot build anything. We have no military factories. We would have to import any kind of gun into our country, so I'm not too sure how well this campaign is really going to go. Like, well, okay, what's actually in our focus tree? We probably should look. So, probably gonna go for Hutig over here. Uh, you know, subjugating people seems like a great idea. So we're gonna go 100 political power, 200 political power right away. Don't know how that really helps us at the moment, but that's fine. Um, so we get monthly population plus 200%. Stability goes down. Even more political power, stability goes down again. Recruit population, not too bad. Attack on core territory, 10%. Does this all count as core territory? Yes, yeah, so we do get just a 10% attacking anywhere here. Four military factories. Seems good, because we desperately need those. So yeah, we just this includes a bunch of factories. What do you do on this side? 5% recruit population and more stability. So you are for, like, a stability kind of a setup. And civilian factories. Well, that's for nerds. We're definitely going to go down uh, the military tree here. There's also this one up in the corner. Once we've unified everything. Contact the UHMK. More civilian factories. We get this once we own all the territory. Right, okay. Destroy the Kivu cult. Stability goes down again. But that doesn't really do anything. Once we've done this, we've more or less have kind of finished the series. Unless we wanted to, you know, attack Italy or attack Portugal, which we could theoretically do, like, right away. Um, it would take almost an entire year to justify those wars, and we would definitely not win any of them. But it's something that we could theoretically do. The Free to, uh, Forbidden Love. A couple has been uh, seen in uh, like Gorstadt. Holding hands and kissing in public. The shocker? They were both boys! Of course they're guilty. Off with their heads! How dare they? Not in my Prussian Congo. So, we're missing uh, equipment. We can see that the AI, I think they've kind of. I thought they would maybe have a. What do you have factories? You have one military factory, no civilian. No factories, no factories, no factories. So. We're not in a great spot. Uh, I think that is safe to say. 
I don't know if anything else has changed in um, Red Flood since we last played it, other than this small update to Africa, because I'm, I'm pretty sure these countries were not here last time, but I might be completely wrong on that. Where's the rest of your army? I'm guessing on like a border of Portugal or something. You actually have tanks as well. But again, much like us, they can't really reinforce their own losses. Um, you might have manpower. Yeah, you actually have manpower, which we do not. Head of government. Okay, apparently there's nobody you can put here, so don't tell me. Like, don't highlight it. It actually doesn't do anything for us. Authoritarian support. Do any of you... I don't need stability right now. I mean, it's at 25%. It's not great. But we literally have no factories, so it's not that bad. So let's go for the future of the Congo. Uh, we have 150 political power, so we could change some stuff. Construction speed going up is not the worst. But I think we want just to immediately go up to higher levels of uh, conscription. That probably makes the most amount of sense. Like mo like everything else, like being able to build equipment faster doesn't matter. We know factories. Um, this allows us to get one civilian factory a little bit quicker. But the super good factories, I don't think matter when you only have one civilian. I think that always goes to you. So, I mean, fuel gain per oil goes up. But I don't think that's important. So really, conscription is the only thing I think it's the entire list that actually matters. Especially since it doesn't look like we have anybody in any of these uh, slots. Okay, so we're definitely going to go for the military tree. 10% It's just a flat... It's basically a flat 10% attack on all the territory we currently control, which is pretty good. Uh, because we know this is going to be a short campaign, um, we'll probably want to focus more on military techs, because we're not building up to anything necessarily. Uh, we are just, because all our factories are becoming from this focus tree. So, most of the other stuff doesn't really matter, so unification war, you just gotta do one of these. So we could theoretically just appoint him, go straight down the military tree, and then immediately try to attack the uh, Republic. Which wouldn't be the worst idea. That's what? That is eight military factories, which is a shit ton uh, when you consider the situation that we're currently in. Your 10% stability loss. Popularity of reactionism goes up. Uh, soccer stadiums to open up for Dutch entrepreneurs. Thank you. Um, are we any rea are like reactionary right now is at zero percent, so I'm not too sure if it really matters too much. Ten percent is nice. Look like how powers ant eh, like it. I don't think it matters at all. I think population, of course, also doesn't matter. Consumer good factories, I also don't think matter. I mean, stability would be nice. But it's actually, it's only a 10% boost, because there's a negative 5 here. And if you get this one as well, that essentially cancels out the base stability, so there's no stability loss if you do all three of these. So all, all that really does is just get you more... ...reactionary popularity. But we don't have any. We're at 0% right now. So, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, we have no factory, so like, let's not even worry about that. Go straight into probably superior firepower, since we're definitely not going to be trying to overwhelm them with numbers. That's not uh, it's the current situation we uh, live in. I mean, we could try just condensing these troops down so they're smaller but uh, stronger. But I think once we start getting our factories going, We'll be in an okay spot. We can start banning parties, but again, this doesn't do anything. I mean, stability would be 
I mean, would it be nice if just factory output and document output, which, again, doesn't really matter too much. 2.1%. Uh, we're definitely going to go for uh, Hans Hutig. Which is stability plus 6. War Sport goes up. Political power gain goes down. But I think that's okay. What do you do? Factory output, absolutely worthless. Okay. We've appointed you. So you, okay, so that did fill in the slot. Not too bad. So we're, of course, going to immediately go for the military camps. Much uncooperative citizens. Manpower goes down a thousand. But stability will go up. Service guarantee security. We gain slightly more popularity. Again, I don't think any of those really matter too much. We can't go up to Accenta because we're not at war quite yet. But once we go to war with the Republic of Congo to ourselves, we should be able to pass that through. It's like we could go to partial mobilization as well. It makes instructions for the civilian factory goes up slightly. And, then, and of course, like what else? We're going to spend our political power on. We might as well. Well, let's just make our industry better. This is going to be ready in uh, about two years. So we're definitely going to get these uh, military camps up faster. When I said this might the series might last like six episodes, I might be wrong. It might be like three, like a very, very short series. Halfway done now. I just don't think the other ones matter too much. I I that's not even, I'm pretty sure that's spelled wrong. I think that's supposed to say libertarian, but I it's just libertism. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Adding one building slot at least means we can start building up some more stuff. So that's nice. And it was nice that we didn't have to wait a full 70 days to appoint uh, Hutig. It did happen automatically. We got 14 days for you, 70 days, 70 days, and then we can start trying to focus and destroy our rival republics. It's going to take an entire year to research. We do have artillery in our army, so we probably do want to get the interwar artillery. A nice little boost. And soon, of course, we will be able to start building a factory. Very, very soon, right? One more day. Thank you very much. Go straight up to the next level. Oh, now we actually cannot build factories anymore. Okay, so we'll cancel this. Five out of three. So what's the point of giving me one extra building saw when you can't actually use it? I have no idea. But first things first, three infantry equipment, of course, we're going to want to go for our total artillery. We need steel. Do we not actually make anything in the country? The answer is like, not really. So France, we're not allowed to trade with you. That's a problem, isn't it? Um, Very much, very, very much is a problem. How long will it take for us to actually get equipment ready? It's going to take us about a year. That's actually not as bad as it as I was uh, expecting. I built some more fry core units in the north. And of course, this is all core territory. So once we take it over, we will get uh, more more uh, population. What do you guys do? So apparently someone else can come in power once we've unified this entire area. So your three civilian factories, stability goes up, and so a 30% stability boost. You are more attack and defense on core territory. Reactionaries go up, political power goes up. And you are reactionary support goes up again. The Ghana Commune has shown up. They are now at war with the United Kingdom. Probably are not going to last too, too long if I had to take a guess. But we'll see. I mean, the United Kingdom right now only has 30 divisions in the entire army, which is really not a lot. So good luck on Uganda. I mean, not really, because we probably want to 
don't want to support you. I mean, I know you cannot ally yourself with Kivu, but... Can I please build a factory? Or, you know, get some more resources somehow. If I go to construction... 25%. I don't know if there's a way I can get a civilian factory back. Which is a real shame. Also, Goring is now in charge here. Oh, no, Gorbos. Not Goring. And what just happened? Well, apparently there's a free territory of Mortania now. Okay. Also, Madagascar, I saw, does also have its own... Um... Focus tree, which is actually kind of interesting. I was thinking we can maybe also do a campaign of them at some point in the future as well. Oh, they got a new portrait for him. I was wondering, like, if they got a new leader, but no. Just a new portrait. Even more military factories, so let's go three. Let's go six and one. Do you guys need support equipment as well in these armies? No. You don't. Put rehunt companies in you as well. Because it's probably going to take us a little bit of time. Like, how much do we need for support equipment? We need for reinforcement to 80. Just because of 2,000 days, which is a lot, I will admit. Morocco's clear their independence from Spain. I'm guessing because they're in the middle of a Spanish Civil War, which is understandable that they might want some uh, independence from that. Russia's gone to war with you. Do any of your focuses work yet? The answer is still no. 7 to 11, 4 to 5. I kind of wish I could just... Attack these guys in any order I wanted to. 110 days. Also, I did not select a new focus, which is my fault. Oh, one of the following must be true. As a completed focus is made until... Oh, it has to be all of the following. Okay, so we gotta do both. Okay, so we get the Lebens Brown. That is my fault. I really wish I had some more civilian factories. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? You don't even have a civilian factory. You have, no, you have, you're a 3 2. Oh, wait, yeah, because you have just a default tree. You actually get military factories for free. Oh, that's actually, you know what? That's actually good for us. We'll be able to use them as a. A stepping stone to expand, which would be nice. Uh, keep on getting some military techs. I mean, we could go for an, a resource ex uh, excavation, which is actually probably the best choice we can do right now. Uh, we're not going to be able to solve any of the aluminum problems, but that's okay. We can at least try to resolve our problem when it comes to steel. At least that's my hope. Um... Yeah, none of you will give me factories, which is a disappointment. So, let's go for Excavation 2. I'm going to put you straight into uh, Construction 2. So we can get Excavation 2 afterwards. I think that is kind of the best thing we could do at the moment. You're a Southwest African Protectorate. You're also part of the Commonwealth. Does the UK have a focus tree? They do, okay. You know, just couldn't exactly remember off the top of my head. But, like, most of their troops are, like, fully reinforced. Ours are still missing. That's 71% strength. I don't think it's a manpower issue. It does seem like it's mostly a, uh... Mostly an equipment issue. Hey, do you have your manpower? No. Not enough manpower to train. That is an issue. Um. 
Really? Even with 2.5%? Like, are you guys not at, uh... For manpower... You only had 72% manpower as well. That is... Bad. Um... So we definitely need to, uh... Boost manpower more. Was one of you a manpower booster? Yeah, a militaristic state. We are going to need that. But we need to go to war to go up. Um, do you do anything else for us? War support plus 10%. So the answer is not really. We'll subjugate to 99%. We'll get our militaristic state up. And then... Um, <laughs> try to get more people to join the army. 57,000 in the field. Yeah, because we definitely cannot reinforce anything at the moment. Like, you only gave us a population boost. And consumer factory goods go up, but that doesn't matter in the slightest, I think. I really wish I could have my uh, consumer good factory back, please. That would be uh, excellent. we got 30 days until artillery are ready to go. 200 days for you to be good. And about 1,000 days for our support equipment. But the support equipment is only affecting... The recon companies, which honestly is not too, too bad. Uh, of course, reinforcements are top priority. Get people to the front lines ASAP. Because again, we are, I believe, outnumbered slightly. Also, the AI is not covering their entire front line. That is one thing I do notice as well. That there is nobody here. So hopefully we can just march our way straight across. That is my, my hope, my dream, is to get that done. The, the excavation, that is a 10% boost, which is going to be 0.7, which I assume is going to round up, so we're going to get like one extra steel. And we need six, so we still won't even be producing this uh, at peak efficiency yet. We're going to slow down artillery production because apparently we do have enough. So it's a negative 55% penalty. That's not great. You right now are a negative 12%. You're at negative 40. Things are not going so great in the Prussian Congo. Which isn't the best. In about 9 more days, we'll subjugate to 99%. But then we'll get an extra 2% popula population and a 10% attack, uh, which is going to be, let's see, on these troops, a, a 6 here and like 0.8. So, I mean, not the best, but also not the worst. Heavy equipment is armor. You both do the exact same thing, so that's completely meaningless. If I free trade... Factory output goes up. But I am exporting steel. But I don't think I can stop the export of steel. I can cut it in half to get like two or one or two more steel out of it. I think we'll just focus on export focus still. I think it's probably okay. And we'll save up our points for when we actually begin the war. But I think this is going to be a good time to end this episode. So thanks, everybody, for watching. My name is Anthem. If you've enjoyed, give a thumbs up. If not enjoyed, click a thumbs down. Want to see more, subscribe. And goodbye.